I was not expecting to be here again so soon. Usually it takes a good couple of months, maybe an entire year, for any real movement to happen when it comes to a Wayland protocol, but for whatever reason, the idea that a window or a client in the Wayland terminology can choose where it wants to spawn on your desktop rather than being set by the compositor that became the talk of half the Wayland world. Now this merge request was already popular when I did the video, but it's only gotten so much worse. Now Jonas here explains much of the contention from the Wayland perspective. If you've not seen my previous video, I highly recommend you go and watch that. In that video we talk about why we're trying to solve this problem, and in this one, it's going to be more about the general backlash and also the new approach that's being explored. Anyway, we'll start with this. We need to better support multi-window clients in Wayland where the client windows have some relationship to each other. For example, GIMP in its multi-window mode. The proposed extension codifies a traditional X11 style and in the Wayland world abandoned concept of window management, i.e. a concept where the clients manage themselves into an optional extension. So right now the idea that a window can choose where it wants to go does not exist in the Wayland world. In the X11 world, any window can do that. This optional extension is only possible to reasonably implement in stacking window managers with floating windows. Things like KWIN for Plasma, Mutter for Gnome, places where you can just drag around the window wherever you want. With tiling window management, sliding window management, which I've never actually seen before, and VR, etc., it is fairly incompatible without extensive hacks to emulate the expected window management style. This extension we use just as it is on X11 to implement features that have a much better potential alternative. First implementing it and then removing it is not really an option, as it will be considered a significant regression, and by doing so, we'd have zero improvements over what we have now, in addition to more angry users. Basically, this feature exists on X11, but maybe there is a better way to do it. So rather than saying, okay, let's just do it in the X11 way, Let's first think about other alternatives, and if nothing is going to fit what we need, then we can do the X11 thing. We shouldn't go right to X11 from the start. It's by no means a hint or a preference. It's a demand, which means if the compositor isn't following it, it will be buggy. So if this protocol is implemented, the user is going to expect that the windows spawn where they should be spawning, similar to how it would on X11. If the compositor says, no, I want to do something different, that's going to be seen as a bug and people are going to report it. Whilst I can understand and sympathize with that take, I generally agree more with what Matthias has been saying, where not all apps fit all compositor styles. So even though it doesn't play nicely in like a VR compositor, like that app is just not made for that environment in the first place. The protocol is optional, so desktops that don't want to be using it just don't have to implement it, and ultimately the compositor does have the final say, because right now, windows on X11 don't play nicely in a tiling window manager. Like, this is just expected if you don't use a floating environment. Matthias continues to update the protocol, changing things based on the various feedback he was getting, until we got to this from Pekka, I don't know how to say your last name, I'll just say PQ, Knack. This is an official Knack from Western to include this proposal in XDG or WP namespaces. We believe this does not belong under the XDG umbrella because that allows clients to low level control of window management in the form of output relative coordinates. But what is a Knack? Knack means negative acknowledgement. But what does that mean in the context of Wayland? Well, even people fairly involved in this project didn't actually know the full power of it. Here's Neil Gumper. Western already doesn't implement almost all the protocols that most people expect in a desktop though. Why should Western be the sole appropriator slash blocker of it landing in XDG? There's KWIN, Mutter, WROOT, and MER2. That said, I do have concerns about the protocol as it stands, but I also have concerns about how this protocol is being discussed. Let's have a look at Wayland Protocols Governance down to section 2.2 and then point number 3. 
Protocols in the XDG and WP namespaces are ineligible for inclusion if knacked by any member. So if any governing member of the Wayland Protocols project says, I don't want this to exist, it cannot be in these namespaces. Now there is still the EXT namespace, but it cannot be in either of these namespaces. And when something's in EXT, there is a certain desktop that's probably never going to implement it. You probably know which one. And Neil, as Neil does, continued to rant about this. Daniel Stone asked, what's missing? Well, all of these protocols. So if they're not going to implement a bunch of protocols they should be implementing anyway, what value does it have for them to be able to knack a protocol that they weren't going to implement in the first place? Because of that, SDDM cannot even run its Wayland Reader properly on Western because of all that missing stuff. Western is very obviously not implementing protocols that people expect slash need anyway. Western is a really weird sort of system because it does have usage in like automotive stuff, but on the desktop, nobody cares about it. So, two problems. First, mentioning alternatives without generating concrete protocol proposals is essentially stop energy. It's unhelpful and can demoralize someone who is really trying to solve a problem. So mentioning the fact that, hey, there are alternatives that can exist, doesn't matter, because no one's actually making the alternative. Second, who should be motivated to try to create a protocol if any of the members can kill it in a heartbeat? And yeah, I can understand that concern as well, especially, as I said, Western probably wasn't going to implement it anyway. It's not a completely dead protocol, but forcing it to be moved into EXT gives it a lot less energy behind it. But Sebastian Wick disagrees with Neil on both points. It is not stop energy. If you come to any project, hack something up that's not acceptable to the maintainers, the maintainers do not have to provide an implementation of the same feature that conforms to their standards. If you want a feature, you have to put in the work. I can understand that point. Second, protocols which work for everyone do not get killed in a heartbeat. In fact, this is literally the first time I ever saw a knack. I've not looked at every protocol proposal myself, but I don't think I've seen one either. They probably do exist, but it's certainly not a common thing. Let's turn this around. Why should someone get forced to implement a feature that they do not agree with at all? If anyone could push any protocol into this repo, what purpose would it serve? You're trying to make it sound like the MRs are not getting merged because we like to knack things and are unnecessarily harsh with reviews and quality requirements. But again, you need to create a protocol, find consensus, and implement it in three projects, and that is a huge amount of work. Now this is why Matthias is an absolute G. That thread was a giant train wreck. But Matthias replied at the end to say, an explanation why it is a bad thing would have been nice, but after that discussion, I can pretty much guess. While I of course do not agree with that decision, I really do appreciate the quick and clear response. That is a lot better than long uncertainty periods, and there definitely has been no lack of feedback. I have a different proposal. He made another merge request with another completely different protocol to address this. But before we get to that, Look at this friendly disagreement between PQ and Matthias. I'm happy to see that this proposal was moved to the EXT namespace, and I'm even more happy to see that you're investigating alternate solutions as well. Thank you. I do expect to get back to this MR and push it further, but not until other options have been explored, potentially we can achieve a good enough result with the session management protocol and the new window relative positioning protocol, in which case we wouldn't need this protocol anymore. And finding a solution that can work for most compositors is definitely worth the time. In the best case, we can find something that more people can agree on. In the worst case, we'll find out that we actually need the EXT placement protocol and can proceed with it later with compositors that do want to support it. This is the new protocol. Draft. Add XDG alignment protocol for window placement control. This is a bit different from the placement protocol, but it is trying to achieve mostly the same goal. In brief, the protocol allows clients some degree of control where their windows end up on a Wayland Compositor output. Some people have voiced concern that now every Wayland Compositor might have an absolute coordinate system. 
While that is certainly true, and while I would assume such compositors simply not implement the output relative positioning protocol, and such apps do not play well with these compositors anyway, I also thought it was a good idea to explore a potential alternative which would look like there are three scenarios which such a protocol needs to address. A main window, plus multiple toolboxes, e.g. multi-window GIMP, multiple windows on different outputs in relation to each other, and window arrangement profiles that the application can save and load. Now this third one, there is a lot of contention about. This is also a far more complex solution than letting Windows just place wherever they want to place. So for the first case, multi-window applications. The application creates a new main window and calls set output anchor for it with e.g. top as the anchor value. The compositor then places the window at the top of the current output. The application creates secondary windows e.g. toolbars and calls set relative position for each of them placing the window in relation to the geometry of the first placed window. The application UI is shown as expected. So they don't get an absolute coordinate system over the entire desktop, but they do get to place relative to where the parent window was spawned. Hopefully the graphic explains that well enough. In the second case, it's exactly the same with the addition of setting the output. So we're not just setting where to anchor on the screen, we're also setting which screen to be anchored on. And the final case, we have the layout profiles. So in this case, the user places the windows wherever they want to place them. This is outside of the protocol. And then when they want to save the layout, a geometry token will be generated for each of the individual top level windows. This is going to say the size and the position of the window. These tokens are then saved in a profile. The user can then just move the windows around however they want to, close the application, come back to it, whatever they want to do. And when they want to load the profile, those geometry tokens are going to be used to place windows where they previously were. Once again, unless the compositor policy for some reason overwrites this, say with a tiling window manager, for example. The one use case this does not fulfill is the case where the UI is constructed from multiple executables, as an application can only arrange windows in relation to its own windows. I can imagine ways to make that work using a token system though, but it requires some care and tokens would need to be valid for all apps in that case. In order to keep this protocol small, I haven't included that. It's better to make this work for most things than nothing at all. So surely then, things this time went in a more positive fashion. Well, the video is not over yet. Please leave session restoration to MR18. You don't have to solve all problems at once. This really doesn't belong in here. And the approach taken here conflicts with MR18. In case you don't know, this is the session management protocol. This is all about session restoration. Matthias right now doesn't think this can address everything he wants it to address, but it probably makes more sense to update that protocol to extend that protocol rather than bolting this functionality that sort of makes sense in here onto a whole separate protocol. But there is another problem. This avoids some of the problems of 247, that's the original merge request we looked at, but some big issues still remain. While the compositor can handle things like panels etc being in the way a lot better, applications still dictate window management, which output they're on, and where they are on that output. This still doesn't work well for compositors that don't have the concept of a regular rectangular output. If you have a scrolling workspace, where would you place a window that's requested to be in the top left corner? In other words, I prefer to have clients express the relationship between their windows and not get involved in where the compositor places those windows in an absolute space. So if you say, I want a window in the middle of the screen, you shouldn't then say the sub windows I want at x relative to that and y relative to that. You should say, I want the window to the left of that or to the right of that, and then the compositor can interpret what exactly that's supposed to mean. As for those scrolling workspaces, for those, the alignment really doesn't matter because there is simply ample space, so they would just ignore it. And Xavier points out there might be an issue with the way the protocol is currently set up, but the client doesn't ignore it. 
it sets an anchor, looks at the information about the output size placement relative to the other outputs in other protocols and places its other windows relative to the main window. That's very much not ideal. So if it sets that anchor, it's going to expect that it can place windows relative to that anchor. And if that anchor is just being ignored, things are going to get really weird. And again, it's Xaver. Xaver has been very active in this thread. Something that I think this request misses is the application doesn't know about the external constraint on its relative placement, like the border between two outputs. If a client puts a toolbar window at x equals minus 500 relative to its main window, and that puts the toolbar on the border between two screens, what should happen? Putting the toolbar on the other output would be weird, but it might be good with instruments of a scientific application. Or you could just put it on both screens. It can sit between the two of them. That's also an option. But I guess you don't want to enforce that for desktops that just don't want to do that. And the position of relative to if the app puts a toolbar window below the main window that's already on the bottom of the output, should the compositor move the main window up to make space, just constrain the position of the toolbar to the output, place the toolbar on top of the main window, or place the toolbar on the opposite side of the main window. Ultimately, I think that's up to the individual compositor and not something that should be defined in the protocol itself. But Xaver has a different opinion. Overall, I think the protocol needs to express such constraints like XDG Positioner does, just adjusted to this use case to answer questions like the ones above. While it adds more complexity to the interface, it gives the client more control and the compositor more information to do its job better. Xaver also brings up the concept of satellite windows where the relationship between the windows isn't just this temporary thing, instead it's permanent, so if you drag around the main window, all of the other sub-windows move with it as well. This is a really uncommon use case, but having it as a function that is possible is probably a good thing. It's not super important and maybe it can be left up to a version 2, but it is something worth at least thinking about. This is still very far away, and we are very, very far away from actually achieving any sort of solution. I expect this protocol to not be the final one. I expect there to be another one, maybe another one, and maybe like 10 protocols later, we go back to the original one, Plasma says, okay, we're going to implement this, WROOT says, okay, we're going to implement this, and then we never talk about it again. That's my thought but we'll have to wait and see what happens. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Once again, do you make use of these multi-window applications? If you do, let me know which ones. And if you don't really care about them, let me know why. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, and Liberapay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Wayland is very exhausting.